Our bodies digest the food we eat into amino acids, sugars, and fatty acids. But how do the digested sugars get into our cells so they can be used for energy? The pancreas releases the hormone insulin following ingestion of a meal containing carbohydrates. Insulin regulates the concentration of blood glucose, the product of carbohydrate metabolism. In most individuals, insulin binds to a specific receptor on the plasma membrane of cells. We will be focusing on skeletal muscle and adipose tissue cells. The interaction between insulin and its receptor travels to the interior of the cell, where it triggers a number of changes in cell metabolism, including glucose uptake by cells in response to elevated blood glucose levels. This process is known as the insulin signaling pathway. The insulin receptor is a dimer made of two extracellular alpha subunits and two transmembrane beta subunits. Disulfide bonds connect the alpha and beta subunits, as well as the two alpha subunits to maintain the receptor as a dimer. Now we're going to go through the initial steps of the insulin signaling pathway. Insulin binds to the alpha subunits of the insulin receptor, which face the extracellular environment. This interaction translates to the beta subunits, which have tyrosine kinase domains that become activated to phosphorylate each other and other proteins. IRS1 binds to the phosphorylated tyrosine residues, which then results in the phosphorylation of IRS1. The phosphorylated sites on IRS1 serve as binding sites for the PI3 kinase. PI3 kinase phosphorylates PIP2, a membrane phospholipid. The addition of the phosphate converts PIP2 to PIP3, which serves as a recognition site for the PIP3-dependent protein kinase, or PDK1 for short. PDK1 phosphorylates AKT, another protein kinase, which further relays the signal to the interior of the cell. This cascade involves many subsequent steps and proteins not shown here. In tissues such as skeletal muscle and adipose tissue, all these steps eventually lead to the recruitment of additional glucose transporters from storage in intracellular vesicles to the plasma membrane in order to facilitate glucose transport into cells. Glucose transporters are transmembrane channel proteins that allow glucose to travel from outside the cell to inside, decreasing blood glucose levels. Skeletal muscle and adipose tissue contain GLUT4 glucose transporters. Once glucose enters cells, it is metabolized further to generate ATP and used to synthesize molecules of glycogen, which are stored in skeletal muscle and liver tissues, or fatty acids stored in adipose tissue. Failure to regulate blood glucose can result in diabetes. Type 1, or insulin-dependent diabetes, can result from failure of the pancreas to produce insulin. In this complex metabolic autoimmune disease, the immune system attacks the beta cells of the pancreas, which normally produce insulin. As a result, insulin synthesis is prevented. Type 2 diabetes occurs when insulin receptors no longer respond to insulin resulting in elevated blood glucose levels, among other symptoms. As you can see, the insulin signaling pathway is essential in regulating the concentration of glucose in the blood following a meal rich in carbohydrates. The pathway involves many steps and molecules, and failure of any step in the pathway can have severe consequences, such as diabetes.